Hi, I'm Shweta. Uh, today I'm going to talk about Apache Falcon, which is basically a data management platform on top of Hadoop. Uh, about me, I've um, uh, been with Inmobi for the last uh, little more than two years. Uh, I've worked on uh, the data management efforts at Inmobi, and uh, I'm also committed at uh, Apache Falcon, and I've also contributed to Apache Uzi as well. Uh, before Inmobi, I was with Amazon for almost five years, uh, working on a Amazon payment service, which is a web service on, in Amazon. Uh, this is the agenda for today. Uh, first, I'll explain about the motivation because to understand and appreciate any uh, uh, any solution, right? You need to understand the challenges and, and why we did it, right? So I'm going to take some time and explain the motivation for it, and then I'll give a brief overview of Falcon. Uh, we'll go through a few case studies where we have used Falcon on production systems, and at the end, we can take uh, questions and answers. Uh, coming to the motivation. Uh, this is the typical data processing uh, landscape on top of Hadoop, right? Uh, you have Hadoop cluster and uh, there is data which comes into the Hadoop cluster. Uh, the data can stream from the, from the application servers into the Hadoop cluster or a slow changing data like the data in the DB or things like that. You can import the data into the Hadoop cluster. and. Uh, well, once the data is available on the cluster, you, you basically uh, uh, design uh, data pipelines which transform the data into the data that you want for reporting systems or for feedback systems or uh, uh, for your prediction or anything, right? And uh, there is a complexity involved in designing the data pipeline itself. Uh, you need to handle the various uh, different stages of the data processing. You need to take care of any failures in the data processing, and you need to rerun them and things like that. And uh, once the data is available, uh, data is processed and it's available on the Hadoop cluster, you need to even worry about the eviction of the data or the archival of the data, because you can't keep the data forever on the Hadoop cluster, as it might cause uh, instability in the cluster as well. So once the data is available on the cluster, it, it's you might want to even replicate the data for BCP reasons or for any business reasons as well. So, so there are different functionalities that are uh, uh, that are required over here, right? There is an import, there is eviction, there is archival, there is replication, and the data transformation. So, instead of every data processing team which needs to worry about all these, all these can be abstracted out into a platform service so that. Not everyone has to worry about these basic stuff. If all these are available as a platform in, for you, and the data processing team can work on the business uh, implementation of the data pipelines that are required, so which is more important uh, as compared to all that. So instead of everybody having to worry about all these things, if we, ex if we abstract out all these into a platform, it gives us two advantages. One is the processing team doesn't have to worry about these basic stuff. And the other one is, if it's a platform, uh, it's quite possible you can use best practices and implement them generically in the platform itself. Uh, so these are the typical core services that are required for any data management. Uh, you have the process relays, which, uh, which basically about uh, how you process the data in different stages. There's lineage information, data lineage, which uh, which basically looks at uh, how the data is transformed at each stage. There's data anonymization, and there's operability around the data, and how do you detect if the data comes in late, which is the late data management. There's retention, replication, and acquisition, and things like that. I'll explain each of these uh, as a separate service as we move along. So uh, this is basically a typical uh, how you have different stages of the data processing in the system, right? There's the raw data that comes into the system, and uh, you, you have different layers of processing on top of it. And finally, you have uh, the data which is available at the end, which is basically the reports or anything for that matter, and uh, which are the final stages of your data pipeline. All this data, uh, the last stage of the data is pretty SLA critical. So which means that uh, you need to make sure that each of these stages of the pipelines run as soon as the data before that is available. 
right? And uh, uh, some systems like Uzi, Apache Uzi already take care of that. They get on the data being available and automatically spawn a uh, data process, the next stage of the data processing. What you also need to take care over here is what happens uh, if there is any failure in the first stage of the data. So you need to make sure that you rerun the, uh, that first stage and make sure that all the further stages are also uh, uh, run smoothly. So there are different challenges that come into picture when you have the data pipelines uh, designed this way. Uh, another thing is the lay data management. Uh, typically, there are uh, two ways of uh, consuming the data, right? There can be human consumption or it's, it's a machine, machine consumption. So a machine consumption, the typically, uh, it, it works with the data that's available. It doesn't uh, wait for the complete set of data being available. For example, uh, assume that uh, there is a person who is looking at all the, what happened yesterday. So all the data that was generated yesterday, what happened, uh, uh, he wants to analyze the report on that. So uh, because the data flows through various systems, it's quite possible that data gets delayed and it comes in late. So for a human consumption, they need to make sure that the data is complete before they look at the reports. So it's important that we detect when the late data comes and rerun the, rerun the reports so that the data is complete. So it's not about rerunning just one step in the data pipeline. You need to make sure that the whole related uh, 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 data pipeline is run. Uh, if we go back to the previous one, so assume that the late data comes in the first stage, you need to make sure that all the dependent pipelines as well are rerun. And that becomes very important when you want to make sure that there is complete set of data that's available. Uh, so what is important there is uh, you need to detect when there is late data and you need to make sure that you rerun everything that depends on the data, all the pipelines that depend on the data. Uh, another thing is the data retention. Uh, data retention, uh, so when you have huge amount of data coming into the cluster, you need to make sure that you, uh, you delete the data which you don't want. Uh, so various different types of data may be retained for different duration. For example, a raw data that comes in may be required to be retained for almost three years for audit purposes or if you want to make sure for BCP and things like that. And, uh, a summary, a report that's generated at the end of the pipeline may be required only for a month, for example. So what is important is a way for you to define retention on different sets of data separately. And you need to make sure that there are other, uh, other services like the archival and all things like that run before the data retention. And uh, another thing that's important for data retention is you don't want a super user which goes and deletes the data for everybody, right? You need to have access controls around the data that's available. Uh, data replication. Uh, so when a data is available on a cluster, you might want to replicate the data to another cluster for two reasons. One is uh, because, of the, uh, because of the global scale of the application, you might have different data centers that are there in uh, data centers that serve the business. So each of these data centers might have their own local Hadoop clusters that are defined over there. So you might want to replicate the data for two reasons. One is for the business, I mean, for the BCP, in case of things go wrong with one cluster, you should be able to resume the business from the another cluster. Or uh, because uh, you might want to aggregate the data across all different clusters, you might want to summarize the data in each of the local clusters and ship out the summary and do a global ag aggregation on on a global cluster. So the, diff the challenges that are there uh, in replication are uh, uh, how do you control bandwidth across different sets of data? One might be a critical data where you want to give more bandwidth, and one might be a uh, not so critical data where you want to, uh, you want to sh replicate it in a slower path. And uh, you need to make sure that the data is replicated correctly, uh, the data correctness, for example. And, uh, if there is a minutely data that's available on the cluster, you don't want to replicate the data every minute. Instead, you want to do data bulking and replicate the data every five minutes or every half an hour for that matter. So these things uh, need to be figured out if you want to just implement data replication. Uh, 
Another part is uh, data acquisition. So, uh, it's so for your, for machine consumption, the data available on the cluster can be directly consumed, right? But for human consumption, you might want to import the data uh, into the cluster and export the data as well. So having import and export from different sources and to different destinations is also becomes critical in any data management system. So, uh, so what we need is, uh, so the various things that I explained, uh, like the retention or the data pipelines, each of these can be uh, implemented using the existing systems. Like for example, a data pipeline can be uh, implemented as a uh, coordinator in Uzi. So Uzi provides the gating on the data being available and uh, you can define a coordinator which basically runs every hour and you can define what are the input data sets and the output data sets and you'll be able to achieve the data pipeline using Uzi as well. Then why, why, why are we trying to develop a new system, new platform uh, if you have one available, right? There are a few shortcomings. One is uh, what Uzi exposes is a way for you to, for, for a given coordinator, for example, you need to define what the input data set is, which means that you need to define the frequency and uh, the location of the data on the Hadoop cluster. So if you have two processes, uh, two pipelines which consume the same data, you have to define this twice. And if you want to change this data, if this data changes, the location changes, or the frequency changes, you need to remember to go change it in all the places, right? And uh, that's just one example for a data pipeline. If you want to implement a data retention, for example, uh, you can probably write your own cron, which uh, does the retention uh, depending on the data being available. So you might have different crons depending on the da different data frequencies. But the problem with that is, uh, the whole details of the data management, uh, when the data was created, when it's archived, or when it's deleted, is, it spans across multiple systems that it becomes difficult to manage, even for, uh, from a developer perspective or even from a support perspective on the production system. So if all this information were available in a single place, it becomes easier for anybody to manage the pipelines. So what we need is a cleaner abstraction of all this in, in a single place uh, so that it, life becomes easier and so that the business team can focus on the right uh, problems, which is basically on the business implementations, right? Uh, another thing that's missing uh, uh, with all this is the dashboard. This becomes very critical when you are managing a big, uh, a complex data pipeline, for example, right? Uh, the production support system uh, is trying to look at this and try to figure out why the data is not available. Instead, if there is a single view of the whole data pipelines which shows uh, which stage of the pipeline is in red, which means that something is wrong over there, or which pipeline is green, which means everything is okay. If there was a single dashboard which could give all this information, it becomes a lot easier for uh, any support engineer to manage these. So what Falcon tries to address this address uh, is trying to do is address all these concerns and give a very clean and abstract way of managing this. Uh, at the art of Falcon uh, are the three entities uh, that Falcon defines. Uh, one is a cluster, feed, and a process. A cluster defines uh, the Hadoop infrastructure, like for example, the name node, the job tracker endpoints, the workflow engine, the scheduler, for example, Uzi, or a catalog service endpoint like HCatalog, or uh, the messaging service as well. A feed defines the data on the cluster. Uh, it can be a data that's directly on the cluster, or it's even possible to define the data through HCatalog, catalog service as well. And it defines what the frequency is, it defines which all clusters this data is available on, and uh, what's the duration of the data which is available on the cluster. And a process is, uh, uh, defines a configuration for your data pipeline. Like for, it defines what are the input data sets, input feed, input data that it consumes, what are the output feed that it generates, and uh, it also defines the frequency at which uh, the process should run, which all clusters it should run on, 
and uh, more. Uh, I'll explain the details of each of these later. So the important thing is uh, each of these data is defined once and you never do it multiple times. And each of these entities have a name, uh, which is a user specified name, and the references are using the name. So all the data related to the Hadoop infrastructure is defined in the cluster. All the data related to the, da the data is defined in a feed. And all the processing logic is defined in a process. So there is a one place and one stop for you to look at the data and see what's happening in the system. So uh, if you want to, for example, given a data, if you want to figure out uh, which all, pipe, uh, which all uh, uh, data pipelines consume this data, or which all clusters it's defined in, what, hap what is the retention on the data, what is the replication on the data, all that you need to know is look at the feed definition and you'll get all the details. So this is the kind of abstraction that Falcon tries to give. It abstracts out all the data management functionality uh, uh, so that uh, the, the developers can work on the uh, right, uh, uh, right things like the business functionality. So this is an example. Uh, this is a DSL that Falcon internally uses. Uh, this is a cluster XML uh, uh, that is there. Uh, as you can see, each of them has a name. And it defines the endpoints for the different uh, Hadoop infrastructure, like the read-only endpoint, write endpoint is the name node endpoint, the job tracker endpoint, and the workflow is the, uh, so the read endpoint is used for replication. The write endpoint is the HDFS endpoint, where the data is stored. And uh, that's uh, where the uh, execute endpoint is the, is where the process is launched for execution. The workflow endpoint is the scheduler, which in this case is Uzi. And the registry endpoint is the catalog service, uh, which can be either H catalog. And uh, there is a messaging interface as well. Uh, Falcon internally uh, supports uh, uh, messages as well. Uh, these messages are, uh, uh, messages are published. Uh, on every data that's created or every data that's deleted or when a pipeline succeeds or fails or things like that. So this is the messaging endpoint, the JMS messaging endpoint that's used. And those are some of the paths that are internally used by Falcon. Uh, this is an example of a feed. Uh, so feed has a name again, and it defines the frequency, the fre uh, frequency at which the data is available on the cluster and the late arrival, which basically defines how late this data can come. And uh, it also supports uh, groups and tags, which are basically uh, useful uh, uh, if you want to tag the feed. And it also defines which are clusters this data is available, from what time to what time this data is available, what is the retention on the data in each of the different clusters. And the type equal to source and the target defines the replication. So it defines this data should be uh, replicated from the cluster primary to cluster secondary whenever the data is available. Uh, finally, there is locations which uh, defines the path of this data on the different clusters. It's possible to define this at a global location, but it's also possible to override it and define it specifically for each and every cluster separately. And finally, you have the ACL which basically defines the owners and things like that. Uh, Uh, and the third entity is the process. Uh, so a process uh, has a name again, and it defines the clusters where this data pipeline should run, uh, the start and the end date where it should run. A parallel uh, defines the concurrency of running the pipeline. How many instances of the pipeline can I run in parallel on the cluster? So depending on the throttling and the capacity available, you can define your own uh, concurrency. Uh, and it's possible to define frequency, which is basically the frequency at which uh, the data is, uh, the process should run. It also defines inputs and outputs. So the inputs is, uh, is the feed name, which, is, which goes as the input. Uh, see that you, what you define in the input and output is just the feed names. You don't specify the, all the locations or the frequency anymore. What you define is just once in the date, in the feed definition. So as part of the process, you specify the inputs and outputs. Uh, 
So, the now of 0, 2 and today of 0, 0 are basically the instances of the data that you want to consume. Like for example, if you have a daily processing that happens and the input data is hourly, I want to consume the whole of yesterday's data and I want to process it and generate, a, a generate a daily data which is output data, right? So, this today of 0, 0 and today of 0, 0. So, these are the EL expressions that uh, Falcon exposes to define what are the input data sets and the output data sets. Uh, finally, uh, uh, you define the workflow engine, which can be either a Uzi workflow that you can specify or a pig or a hive uh, also, uh, which basically contains the processing logic for your data. And uh, you can even specify the retry policy, which, uh, which uh, explains how you want to handle uh, in case of uh, failures. Do you want to uh, retry, how, how many times you want to retry and what is the policy with which you, you can retry, like a periodic or a back off policy. At the end of the specification, you also specify how do you want to handle late data, which are the late inputs and when the data arrives late, how do you handle that? Uh, do you want to rerun the whole pipeline again or you want to do incremental processing and things like that, that you can specify in the late data. Uh, so that's basically the different entities that are uh, defined in Falcon. Uh, this is a high level architecture of Falcon. Uh, Falcon is a very lightweight application. Uh, it has uh, CLI and REST APIs to manage different uh, uh, entities that are there. And uh, it also exposes instance functions which basically uh, you can uh, look at the one instance of the pipeline, a, a hourly process for example, you want to check what happened to that uh, uh, process which was supposed to run today. So, or what happened to that process which was supposed to run from uh, last 10 days. So, these are the instance functions which basically look at each instance of the process or each instance of the feed and gives you status of that. So, those are the different instance functions. So, it's possible to, uh, uh, all these functions are available through both CLI and REST API. Uh, so, what Falcon is just a high level abstraction, uh, it doesn't do any of the heavy lifting. All this, uh, uh, the process, uh, uh, process orchestration and uh, the uh, feed retention and the replication, all this is uh, scheduled on a scheduler. In this example, uh, we have taken it up as Uzi but it's possible to plug in any other workflow engine if available. Uh, so, Falcon just abstracts out and all this heavy lifting is done by Uzi. And uh, the different entity XMLs are stored in config store, which is part of Apache or of Falcon. Uh, it can be configured to store it in HDFS or any chain file system as well. And then you have the Hadoop uh, file system, which is HDFS and MapReduce. And Uzi in turn can talk to the catalog service for the data availability. Uh, so, in addition to uh, uh, orchestrating the different entity life cycles like retention, replication, or a process, it also uh, uh, customizes the workflow with a pre-processing and a post-processing step, which is uh, which is used by Falcon internally for retries for late data handling. So. Uh, as part of the post-processing of the workflow, it sends out uh, JMS messages, which Falcon re uh, listens on, and uh, it does the retry uh, in case there are failures. It also has the late data mechanism, which basically monitors this, and depending on the configured late data detection, it checks if there is any uh, delay, uh, late data, and then reruns the whole of the workflow, uh, the processing again. Uh, this is the basic entity schedule, uh, how the data flows across different systems. So, you, you have a cluster XML, a feed XML, and a process XML that are submitted to Falcon. And uh, when you submit these entities into Falcon, these entities are stored in configuration store. And uh, when you schedule this feed or a process, a retention or a uh, replication for a feed or a process lifecycle kicks off, which basically all orchestrates the uh, life cycle into a Uzi workflow and uh, it is scheduled on Uzi as different coordinators in Uzi. Uh, 
and uh, it also has a pre-processing and a post-processing step which basically takes care of sending the required notifications. Uh, and then there are instance management APIs that are available which uh, looks at the data and uh, uh, you can get the status or, status or a suspension or a resuming the workflows and things like that at a, in each and every instance level as well. Uh, so this is the physical architecture of how Falcon is deployed across multiple clusters. Uh, when you have a global uh, business uh, which uh, spans across uh, multiple geographical locations, you will end up setting up different data centers uh, for latency reasons. So you will have different clusters that are available in different Hadoop clusters that are available in different data centers. And the application servers uh, uh, stream the data into the Hadoop clusters, right? So and you want to do processing on each of the local clusters as well. So it's possible to have multiple clusters set up as well with Falcon. Uh, just like uh, each Hadoop cluster in each of the data center, each Falcon server is deployed in each of the data centers again. And uh, because this Falcon can work across multiple clusters, there is a, another component of Falcon called Prism, which provides a global view of all the feeds and processes. So all the entity operations like a submit uh, and everything happens through the Prism. Prism uh, doesn't do any of the, uh, doesn't have any other functionality other than figuring out uh, which all uh, clusters uh, the feed or a process should uh, should be submitted and it just forwards the request to the different application, uh, the Falcon servers. So each of the Falcon servers work independently, they don't know of each other and uh, uh, they, they take care of the entity life cycles. Uh, another important uh, uh, thing that's required in a data management is lineage, data lineage, right? Uh, assume that you have generated a report and uh, somebody looks at it and comes back after a month, says this report is wrong, how did you come up with this report? So you need a way of tracking down uh, which, which version of your application ran which produced this data and it's also important for you to know which data it consumed to produce this data. So it's important to record this information so that it's available readily for the users. So what Falcon does is as part of the post-processing step of the uh, different entity life cycles, it also records which instance ran, which version of the application ran. And all this data is available uh, in a graph in Falcon. And there are APIs to get this information. Uh, we use Titan to store this information in a graph in Falcon. Uh, so there is also a UI which gives uh, different uh, uh, instances and their dependencies. Like for example, over here for each of the feed instance, it says when is the, uh, which is the process instance that consumed this and when was the data uh, available, the output data available and if there was any retention on it, when the data was deleted and things like that. It becomes, when you have a complex data pipeline, it becomes very important for you to track uh, what happened at each step and uh, how the data is, uh, uh, data moves uh, across different steps, and how the data is finally deleted. So lineage gives you all this information at one place. <laughs> Another component uh, of Falcon is the uh, designer. Uh, so what happens typically uh, uh, in an organization is you have one team which, is, uh, which has all the expertise to uh, develop data pipelines who know of about Hadoop, who know about uh, how to uh, write pipelines using PIG or a MapReduce job, right? And uh, when you have different products and which, are, which have different requirements, the data processing team becomes a bottleneck uh, and it's the only team which knows how to do things. So that becomes a bottleneck for uh, any new feature additions, right? So, uh, and that won't scale. So for you to scale, uh, what you need is UI, which, which doesn't have any details of the Hadoop, uh, which gives an option for anybody to go ahead and discover what data is available on the cluster and enables you to design a pipeline uh, 
without knowing the details about uh, how many Hadoop clusters are available or uh, uh, or uh, uh, how many uh, how many map reduced slots do I need or uh, how is this data stored in the cluster like on edge catalog or is there an edge base or a DFS and things like that. So a designer gives a UI for you. The left hand side what you can see is the different data that's available. On the right side you uh, define the different transformations that are possible on the data. Like you can uh, have filters or you can have aggregations, you, have, you can define your own transformations and things like that. And it's also possible for you to define different actions like uh, a email action when the data is available I just want to send out an email and things like that. So what this UI gives you is way for anybody without any knowledge of Hadoop to go ahead and design a pipeline and verify that the pipeline works fine and go ahead and deploy this pipeline on production environment. Uh, this is a work in progress, it's uh, still not fully completed. These are just the mocks of it. Uh, so those are the different uh, functionalities that uh, Falcon provides. Uh, we'll just go through some of the case studies where we have used Falcon on production environments. Uh, so this is a multi-cluster failover uh, use case where uh, you have the raw data that, that comes into the cluster and it goes through various stages uh, where you clean up the data and uh, you have some processing of the data and you have the final presentable data that's available on the cluster, right? For, uh, uh, for BCP reasons, you want to, you want to uh, replicate this data, uh, replicate the raw data into a different cluster so that if things go wrong, if the cluster goes down for any reason, your business continues as usual. So this is achieved using a feed replication directly. And uh, so, uh, so if, uh, if one of the cluster goes down, you can set up a process and you can just remove the cluster which doesn't work and add another cluster and submit it to Falcon and everything will work as is. So it requires very less configuration from the user and uh, uh, it lets you operate uh, very easily. And uh, uh, the feed retention, because the feed is defined for each and every data that's available on the cluster, it's possible for you to define the feed retention for every data that's there. So feed retention comes in handy and it's, it gives a single view of the data for you. Uh, Another case study that we have is the distributor processing uh, uh, that we are doing at Inmobi. Uh, so Inmobi is uh, uh, leading a mobile advertising network and uh, this is the Hadoop usage at Inmobi. We have around seven production clusters. There is more than one PB of storage available on these clusters. Uh, there is around 5 TB of data that keeps, uh, the raw data that keeps coming in every day. There's 20 dB of data processing that happens every day. And uh, the clusters are around of 300 nodes cluster. And uh, we use HBS as well, which is a 50 node cluster that we have. We have more than 200K Hadoop jobs that run every day. And there are 80K Uzi workflows uh, uh, that we have. And we have 500 plus feed definitions. And uh, we have around over 200 uh, Falcon process definitions as well. So we have various kinds of data. Uh, when a user requests for an ad, uh, all the details are logged as a request data, request logs. And uh, when an ad is served for that uh, request, it's called an impression. And all the impression details are stored as an impression log in the application server. And uh, when a click happens on that ad, there is a, a beacon that is sent back to the server and the click servers again log all this click information. And there can be various beacon events that can come in later as well, which the servers log again. So we have all this data uh, available, uh, the application servers uh, log all this data and this data is streamed uh, minutely into the Hadoop cluster. Uh, and there are, uh, so this is basically what happens in a single data center. We have uh, five different data centers uh, uh, that are available and uh, there are Hadoop clusters set up in each of these data centers. 
and there are application servers again in each of these data centers. So this is the processing that happens in each of the data centers uh, locally in each of the clusters. And uh, of course we can uh, ship out all this data into the global cluster and do all the processing uh, globally right? on, on one single cluster. But the challenge there is the huge amount of raw data that you want to ship to the single cluster. So there is huge bandwidth consumption, right? To optimize on all that, what we do is uh, we process this data in, a, in each of the local clusters and only the summary, which is very small in size, is shipped to the global cluster. So because the summary size is very small, we save on the bandwidth as well. And uh, so this is the various stages of the uh, uh, data processing that happens in each of the local clusters. Uh, so the same processing actually is actually duplicated across uh, the five different data centers, that's, uh, five different clusters that are available. So, so instead of you having to define all this uh, data and the processing multiple times on each of these five different available clusters, what uh, Falcon enables us is defining a process once and define which all clusters it's defined in. It's just a single XML where we define the processing and we submit this to a prism, Falcon prism, and prism takes care of going and scheduling all these clusters in the relevant, uh, 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 relevant clusters. So Falcon helps a long way in uh, managing all these complicated pipelines. And uh, automatically the feed replication takes care of uh, replicating this data into the global cluster where uh, uh, where we aggregate over the data across different clusters and uh, uh, have different reports for both the human consumption and the machine. Uh, on the highlights, uh, so these are the some things that we have planned for the future. One is the data governance, which uh, basically covers the data anonymity and uh, 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 each data can define the each data pipeline can define the statistics uh, uh, statistics and Falcon should be able to uh, look at those statistics and look at the data quality and figure out if this data is a valid data or not. So you don't want some wrong data getting consumed by uh, 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 so by uh, uh, some uh, business people and uh, so. So this data governance covers all that. And uh, another one is the data pipeline designer that I showed the mock on, uh, which gives you a UI wherein people who don't even have any knowledge of Hadoop should be able to go ahead and design a pipeline. And the third one is the data acquisition, which basically about get, how do you get the data into the cluster, uh, depending on either uh, if it's a slow changing data or a stream data. Uh, the final thing which is missing is the dashboard that we need, which basically uh, uh, enables you to uh, define, define a feed or a process easily through the UI and you don't have to write XMLs for it. And uh, how do you uh, manage the different pipelines and get status of each and every instance and things like that. So that's a dashboard uh, which is coming up soon. Uh, to summarize on uh, what we saw till now, uh, what Falcon gives you is the data management solution which is abstracted out into a platform. And uh, all this is abstracted onto a platform so that uh, people can uh, worry about the uh, business details rather than uh, worry about this uh, uh, this every uh, retention or a replication and failures and things like that. All this is handled by Falcon. You have the import export and the serialization, the schema or the replication retention and archival for data which is managed by Falcon. Or coming to the data processing, it uh, takes care of the data dependencies and uh, late data handling or what happens if there are any failures in the data pipelines and how do you handle the decentralized processing across multiple clusters and uh, about running your uh, pipeline altogether. Uh, that's basically what I have for today. Uh, any questions? <laughs>
it can be anything for that matter. Uh, so what feed uh, gives you is an abstraction of the data. That can, data can be on EDFS or uh, anywhere for that matter, or you can use HK log to abstract out the data as well. And the processing is, again can be a pig or a hive, or you can define a Uzi workflow or a map reduce job, anything for that matter. So this is not specific to any uh, uh, anything in uh, anything in particular, and uh, okay. it just gives a clean abstraction. Any other questions? Okay, thank you.